This is going to be a good one. I'd like to welcome two incredible musicians to the studio, Lauren Mayberry from the band Churches and Shirley Manson from Garbage. Thank you so much for being here. This is very exciting. We have two Scots you on do. the couch at the same time. <laughs> We're both from fantastic, amazing bands. I'm waiting for a black hole to open up right now and no suck booze. us all in. No booze. <laughs> I understand it's like middle of the day. but Well, um, well we can fix that really Are quickly. Are you implying you that our fellow Scots, Scots like to drink? Is this what you're inferring by that? Well, I was saying yesterday. Ah! Wait, way to reinforce like, the stereotype there. Yeah, no there. shit. I wish I wish I was better at drinking whiskey. It gives me heartburn, so <laughs> I can't see it. But maybe one day. Um, well, so thank you so much for being here. Um, you did a keynote together, and I have to assume there were, were obviously the topic was very serious and interesting. But I imagine there was probably quite a few super fans for both from for both of you there. I hope so. Yeah, I was there a lot of people. I think everybody was pretty cool, you know. Yeah. I, I didn't get any weird no, super felt, fan vibes, but no, it felt like a good, thoughtful crowd, and we tried to be thoughtful. She's funny. So yeah. I cover up my discomfort with jokes. Yeah, so. yeah, it's a coping <laughs> mechanism, like right now. <laughs> yep. Um, so the one of the topics of the keynote was I'm quoting from the website: "How to protect the female identifying narrative in what remains of a male-dominated industry." How do we distill that into layman's and layman laywoman's speak right now? Give me some insight into what you guys were talking about. Oh my God! I mean, that sounds very heady. It wasn't yeah, as intellectual yeah, why, as yeah, that, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think we were talking. Both of us come from a really similar background. Obviously, we come from the same country. Our careers have run along really similar parallels, funnily enough. Um, and I think we're both very concerned about the sort of eradication of the female narrative within music, particularly rock music. I mean, we're both sort of in rock bands. I mean, I know you identify as a pop artist. I, I think you're sort of a mixture, mm -hmm. much like we I were, did. you know, but we're alternative. Let's leave it at that, an alternative mm -hmm. band. But the women's narrative traditionally has been sort of eradicated historically, you know, and uh, that concerns me. I'm sure it concerns Lauren. Um, women's contribution to music is always sort of seen as a lesser contribution than that of our male counterpart and you know the statistics surrounding women in music is still pretty grim you know I mean I think it's less than 16 percent of women are are involved in 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 uh, sort of uh, prof professional what am I trying to say here I can't even speak properly <laughs> in um, uh, recording music so oh, okay. less than 16% yeah. of recorded music is, is produced by women. And that is a, an astounding, disappointing statistic. And one, I know that we are both passionate about changing. Yeah, so I guess it was just a forum to discuss some of those things. And yeah, just kind of further the conversation that's already been going on mm -hmm. in music about those things. And about inclusivity and diversity yeah. and, you know, trying to encourage better representation for women of color, black women, trans women, disabled women, um, indigenous women. I mean, the list is endless, sure. yeah? So it's just all about, that's kind of what we talk, talked about today and our experiences, our individual experiences in music. So it's so helpful to everyone um, when people like you point that out and discuss the issues that um, are exi it exists. I was curious to know what steps uh, have you and even, even your bandmates taken to help sort of move this forward? Well, I think one thing that I think we're always conscious of reminding ourselves is that you shouldn't have that conversation on behalf of other people. I think there's a lot of mansplaining, whitesplaining that goes on about those things, and I think it's important for us to recognize that we have the privilege and have a platform to help people get access to, to have the conversation that needs to be had. So, um, yeah, I think... I don't know, it's just helpful to kind of, if you have a tiny little moment to raise a tiny bit of awareness, it doesn't mean that you're fixing anything or that you know everything, but you're kind of helping be part of a conversation. And hasn't churches uh, contributed some, some of the money that you guys have made in ticket sales to uh, certain causes? Yeah, well, on the last record, we did um, a dollar ticket to Amnesty International, but on this album, um, a company we work with called Plus One, which is a great organisation, they find a local girls' rock camp in the areas we play, and then a dollar from each ticket goes to that rock camp. And I feel like things like that are actually at least a tangible thing that you can do, because we can sit and talk about the existential aspects of it all day, but I guess something like that, I'm like, it's, you're putting your money literally where your mouth is, and we're lucky to get to be able to do that, that we can play shows where we can do that. So. 
Are there things that you would suggest that uh, people in the industry could do to sort of help further this along? Oh my God, yeah, I mean, the list again is endless. I mean, to get more women and diverse women on festival bills would be a nice start. You know, to be offered record deals would be a ni another nice start. Um, I think it's important for artists like me and Lauren to invite women onto the bill. I mean, the amount of problems I've had getting even women to support garbage on tour mm -hmm. has been kind of astounding Yeah, because there's always these defaults. It's like, okay, so you, we're about to go on tour. We need a support band. Who's out there? Who's, who would like to come out with us? And we get lists and they're all men or you know, bands of m males. And I'm like, yeah, but what about the women? I'd like, I'd like a woman to open up for us. Oh, there's no, there's no bands with women that are, are at the, the level that you're looking at. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll find them myself. I've had to find all our openers over the last really? sort of few years myself. How do you do that? How do you find them? Well, I'm lucky in that I, you know, I follow a lot of artists that I love. Um, I get turned on by fans to, to, to act. You know, like we had Dream Wife out with us in, in Europe last year. And that was just a fan saying, you'll like this band, check mm. them out. And I, I loved them. And I was like, yeah, let's get them. You know, I mean, just it's that simple. So you, it's almost like you could solicit this to crowdsource it from your fans and say, what, what band should I be paying attention to? What female uh, band should I be paying attention to? What, people, what bands of color sure. should I be paying attention to? Yeah, but then, of course, you've got limited time as well. I mean, you're, the, the problem is you have to balance the business end with the creative end. And the creative end, for me, is the most important end. That well, makes I think sense. That's what I respect a lot about what Shirley does with her platform is that when I follow you online, I'm like, you're always talking about things you like. Like you call bullshit on what needs to be called bullshit on, but there's so much positivity in it as well. So it's like when you <laughs> well, but when you find artists that you love, that you talk about them and you're excited about them, and if people see, they're like, who's the true support for garbage? And that matters. It makes a difference, and it's like feeding something positive into the world because we all know that some stuff is really shitty, but you can sit and talk about that all the time and not do anything. So yeah. I think the doing is the doing. really important. Uh, I, I, the, the, <laughs> I like the, uh, <laughs> the doing. Gotta <laughs> get in there. Um, uh, so you, both of you have been outspoken um, for pretty much your entire careers, and which is something I've always had a lot of respect for and appreciation for. Um, and it's, you know, it's caused hiccups for you dealing with the public and the press and, and things like that, even your safety for that matter. Um, how come more musicians I mean, now it's cool to do it, but how come more musicians haven't? <laughs> well, we come from a very opinionated culture. I mean, we, we come from a really small <laughs> island where it's bad weather a lot of the time and you sit in pubs and you shoot the shit. That's part mm -hmm. of our culture. So in Scotland, people get a little overwhelmed sometimes around Scottish people because we shout a lot at each other <laughs> and we I've share opinions and we don't take it personally. You can yeah. have a shouting match with somebody and at the end of the night everyone's over each other going, I love you, I really love you though. And that's the end of the night. But you mm -hmm. can have an argument and it's not help taken personally. Mm -hmm. So I think both of us are probably quite outspoken just because that's a culture we have emerged from. Is that well, fair? Yeah, and I don't think that, I guess I didn't really think about it until we were transplanted to another place and maybe not quite so left field as we had been but I didn't really get I don't think you would really get anywhere being in a band in Scotland being really meek and apologetic like that's not how I ever got anything done that's not how you, I got taken seriously in any room or in any project you have to kind of fight your corner to get like to carve off your little island part of it so yeah it just never really occurred to me to not say those things really and it's not that we were set out to be specifically outspoken to me I was like this is just common sense it's been common sense for decades and it was interesting the number of men and women that were like well you've chosen to be in this industry and if you can't handle that then you're just not tough enough and I was like well I think I'm plenty tough I just don't think that's fine to expect to, to accept the status quo of it well you got a lot of trolling online right a Indeed, lot of yeah. sort of sexist misogynistic, nasty yeah, bullshit. Yeah, well, and I wonder if it's because we were quite bloggy and then we kind of yeah. came out of blog. So then there's a specific demographic for that. And then we like disappointed a lot of the blog culture, I think. Because you had an intellect. Well, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> I was going to say just had opinions. You're gorgeous but... and you have an intellect. Well, I was terrifying. Gonna, I was going to mm. say, if you could almost <laughs> write sort of a how-to uh, book for young up and coming female artists navigating the the social um, media element of your career, right? Because that's such a part of your of anyone's any musician's business now. 
But then that depresses me a little bit. Well, a little bit, but at the same time, you've lived <laughs> it. You've asked, you've been asked the questions about it, and you've well, made it through. Well, I think it's just interesting because to me, I'm like, there's so many positives and so many negatives of social media. Like we were saying earlier, I was like, in a way, it's really cool because it means that there's a place where you can explain to people what your band is and show more about it, and that's a more honest way than in interviews and stuff. But um, I don't know. It kind of I feel a bit weird about social media sometimes because it feels like we're all kind of celebrities in our own lives or something like it's a bit of a weird and it's weird because if I feel like crap and then I go on Instagram I feel way more like crap afterwards <laughs> so and I could th but then if you feel fine then you can find loads of positive things and there's loads of raccoon memes and like all this kind of stuff that I want mm -hmm. so I don't know I feel like it's important to be conscious of what it is and how it can be used positively but also how I don't know if we should I don't know if we are wired to be able to deal with it that well human beings I understand. Mm. I, I've tried to overpopulate my Instagram feed with lots and lots of dog it's really uh, accounts. It's really helpful. So that I get, I get a lot of, a lot <laughs> of, oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. I don't feel quite as bad when I see someone else who's killing it at life. <laughs> everybody seems to be killing it at life though, it's like, except for me. I'm always <laughs> saying that to my husband. It's like, everybody's killing it at life, is it? But it's the, that's, yeah, it's like the curation of it. Of like, course it is. I like, think oh. it's sort of beautiful though, in a funny way that people are creating their own life that way. I mean, it's ridiculous and it's, bound to end somewhere bad but there's also mm. something beautiful and glorious about going to go out in a blaze creation of yeah narcissistic of, glory yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um, so y y i'm assuming well, I, I said you could almost write a book about what you've done um but at the same time you have uh asked her for advice in the past am i right in thinking that she doesn't need my it's, advice and well, neither has she come looking for it okay <laughs> shut that question down real fast <laughs> i mean i enjoy it when well it every, happens, everybody's but experience too is so different that what might have worked for me and vice versa won't work for another person mm. you know um, that is another thing I've definitely learned is like what what I thought was right for me could be the polar opposite advice to give to somebody well I do think it's been helpful though that I guess like I'm really lucky to work with really smart thoughtful men but I'm surrounded by a lot of men a lot of the time. So, and then we've all learned a lot in the last seven years of being in this band. And I didn't really, I think I was figuring out those opinions and figuring out what to do about them as it was happening. So, but then sometimes you would feel a little bit gaslighted when things were happening. You're like, I mean, am I overreacting? Is this a lot? I don't really know. Are you on so, your period? That's the classic. And I'm like, mm. no, I'm just no, tired I'm not. to yeah. my core. I'm just sick. Like, <laughs> I'm tired of this bullshit. So, but then it's, so it has been reassuring in a way to talk, like, to talk to other people who have had not the same, but like, I can empathise with the experience. And I mm -hmm. think because it's such a weird, bizarre thing that you get to do for a living, and most of the other people I know who do it in the same position as me are male. So it's been interesting to be like, I'm not crazy, right? And you're like, No, you're not no, crazy. You're not Just crazy. keep going. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> right. okay. Well, so uh, if Shirley clearly wasn't an inspiration for you when you were coming <laughs> up, uh, who were, were some of the bands or, or artists or female-led uh, bands that where you're like, Yeah. Yeah, I like what they're doing. Well, I remember I had one I had one friend who had Sky TV, so we would go watch 120 Minutes on MTV2, mm -hmm. and we would watch that. And, yeah, it was just discovering, like, the yeah, yeah, yeahs and PJ Harvey and things like that were so important to me because, like, I, as a young girl, was like, well, there are women that are doing this, but that's not what it's about. That's not what the, for the point of this conversation is. They're writing amazing songs and being, like, rock stars. And it, I guess... You know, when you're growing up, you don't see that. When I, you didn't see that, that wasn't happening on a local band level. It certainly wasn't really what was on mainstream TV at that time. And um, I think both of those artists have really evolved over the course of time. And they are artists. And you were saying earlier, like women aren't taught to be artists in the same way that men are, or told that it's valid for them to yeah. be an artist in the same way. And I would say that Karen O and PJ Harvey are artists in the truest sense yeah. of the word. So. Uh, be, you you came up in a different era where it was probably even less of that. There, but who was it for you? Who did you identify well, with? Well, primarily it was Susie Sue from Susie and the Banshees. Yeah, okay. I mean, sh she had so much influence over me and still does, actually. I mean, I still... I was really lucky I had really good taste when I was young and I picked <laughs> magnificent women to follow who have been able to sustain their own careers into their 70s. I mean, you know, Patti Smith and Debbie Harry and... Chrissy Hind. I mean, what what better role models could I possibly have picked? Um, and Susie Sue. So my world was rocked by those women and rem remains that way. You know, I, I, I got to tour with Debbie Harry last year 
and I learned so much from her even then. You know, being on tour with someone like that, who is that courageous and changing the game for all women all over the world. That she, she at 72 years old, was as vibrant as ever on stage and, and is on the front cover of magazines and still living out her dreams as a, as a, as a creative is astounding, you mm -hmm. know? And uh, it was very exciting. And I, I'm so grateful to all these women because they are the torchbearers for me. And I am the torchbearer for, you know, a generation behind us, you know, so. Yeah, that, that's exciting. I mean, that's especially true for uh, older artists and then even more true for older female artists is this concept of you're, you're, old, you're, you're old enough, okay, now it's time to, to, to go somewhere off. else, right? Yeah, but you know, that the, the old enough, you're old enough or too old hits women in their 30s, you know, around, around about Lauren's age. And I'm looking I'm at Lauren, she door. looks, <laughs> you know, so young and still so vital. And yet I remember when I was 30, journalists would tell me to my face, you know, you're old. And I'm thinking, in my head, I'm like, wow, I really am old, and whoa, what does that mean? And wow, I bet I best give up then and go and have babies and curl up my wings yeah. and give yeah. up. And then something, thank God, in me was like, I'm going to continue on being an artist because I'm going to do what my heroes did, and I'm going to keep making music, and mm -hmm. that becomes representation in itself. So there are more women for Lauren's generation who are now eking out careers in music in their 40s, 50s, 60s. 70s in Debbie Harry's case and that is great for Lauren's generation who may continue into your hundreds well, and I, remember <laughs> when, like, I hope I mean well, please drink drink more water and less beer no it's but, true um, the, the first person to live 150 is already alive no they way say. yep um but I remember on the second album that we put out which would have been like four years ago a journalist on luckily it was on the phone like asked me so will you be taking time off after this record to focus on your personal life and I'm the youngest person in the band. Like Ian is 13 years older than me. Mm. And I was like, excuse me? I was like, what do you know about my personal life? I don't know. I was like, it's something terrible happening. But <laughs> and then I was like, what? Yeah. And then the implication, I would have been 20, well, much younger than I am now. And I was like, why? The A, that's incredibly nosy. And B, what a weird presumption to make. And you would never ask me that if I was a man. And then I was like, I don't think it's relevant. I don't talk about my personal life. Is how I got into shush. But then I was like, a male journalist thought to ask that. I was like, what? Why and you've you? been a journalist in music. And I hate it. So <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think, like, Debbie, like, I loved Debbie Harry now. I love her when I was growing up. But I feel like she's a really interesting example of, like, the aesthetic of, like, classic Debbie Harry is so iconic. But I love that. Well, she's she, the archetype, basically. Yeah, yeah, she was. And then it was like, you can, if you say that the word Debbie Harry, you can picture it in my mind. I can picture the, the Vulture T-shirt. I can picture the whole thing. But I love that she she was that and she embodied that for so many people but then she curated and she was always like working with other artists and always investing in other art forms and then that's what gave her the longevity to get to where she is because she's really really talented and I also think that in this industry women are also pitted against other women a lot especially when she's the archetype so they were like she's what you should all aspire to be but instead of being the mean girl it seems like she's done nothing but reach out to other women and make space for I've got a really women. cute story about her though it's like um so we were all on tour and it was Garbage and Blondie and Deep Valley. And Deep Valley are two incredible rock and roll girls um, duo. And we were all going to dinner here in Austin actually one night and we're walking out the hotel and Debbie's there and she's got her computer. And I'm like, Debbie, we're going to dinner. Why have you got your computer? And she goes, I've got some little ideas I want to share um, with Lindsay, who's, who's the singer of Deep Valley. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so we go to dinner, she sits down opposite Lindsay, she opens her computer and she's got examples of makeup that she thinks would look amazing on Lindsay because Lindsay was wearing crazy makeup back on that tour. And the following day she sits, the hour before Lindsay goes on stage and does Lindsay's makeup. And to watch an iconic goddess like Debbie Harry take time out of her preparation before her show mm -hmm. to put on a face for another female artist like TV it's right? extraordinary it was an extraordinary <laughs> act of generosity and respect and I mean right in that minute I'm like this person is glorious and she's teaching me so much about m being generous to other women being generous to other artists other women not being th a threat you know we're mm. all part of the same fabric you know and we have to look after each other until there is parity in the music industry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are almost out of time, but I have one question for the both of you. Um, if you could, in three words or less, um, tell me 
what it is or how do you, would you describe the other person's band Ooh. and their music? Oh my God. In three words or less? Yeah, I, I had words for it, but I mean, yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, I, I think it's very expansive sounding and m magical and powerful. Yeah. Magical. That's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's the guys with the synth. The, the magical, magical synth. <laughs> I've got some Maybe it has nothing to do with your voice. <laughs> Do you think uh, it might have something to do with your voice? I sing quite high. Yeah, Cuts. It might, be, cutting. It might you bring the magic? <laughs> well, I want three words. I'm like, oh, this is tough. This is a quiz. Um. <laughs> On the spot. Uh, brilliant. Fantastic. Um, wonderful. Life changing. <laughs> Best ever. <laughs> Best um, ever. I would say. This is uncomfortable. Can you no, stop right now? Can we just go on for another question? Hard, soft, and honest. <laughs> okay, we'll, we will, I like it. We will thank leave you. it at that. Uh, Lauren, Shirley, thank you so much for thank being here. Thank you so much. No, thank you for uh, having me. This has been really fun. I, I, I can't tell you how much uh, I, I appreciate it. It's Scotland, represent on the couch. Represent. Um, represent. Uh, thank you so much, Shirley Manson and Lauren Mayberry. Um, please come back soon. And thank you out there for watching. Um, continue to watch uh, South by Southwest live at southbysouthwest.com slash live. Thanks so much. <laughs>